The enigma of this spaceship that is no longer operative, Umwamwa Intersolar Asteroid, one scientist explains. Professor Loeb, 56 years old, joined forces with Shmuel Bialy to publish a paper speculating that Umwamwa was not a comet and that it was not an asteroid. Instead, he argued, its unusual trajectory could be explained if it was an artificial light sail. So it's not something naturally found in our universe. What is Umwamwa? Harvard professor Avi Loeb defends his proposal that it is an alien probe. A Harvard University professor says a strange interstellar object passing through our solar system may be an alien space probe that has come out fighting against his critics. This is on News Australia by Jamie Seidel. Harvard University Astronomy Department Chair Avi Loeb is no stranger to controversy and he's suggesting a strange object spotted entering our solar system just very very recently from deep space could be an alien probe that just is just the most recent example. And now he's adding fuel to the fire. In an interview with the Israeli newspaper Hearts, the Israeli professor fiercely defended his hypothesis. He says, as soon as we leave the solar system, I believe we will see a great deal of traffic out there. Possibly we'll get a message that says, welcome to the interstellar club. Or we'll discover multiple dead civilizations. That is, we'll find their remains. So at the heart of the debate now is Umuamua. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. I don't know if I am. It's a Hawaiian word. Translated from Hawaiian, it means messenger sent from the distant past. And it came from outside the ecliptic, the flat swirl of planets, asteroids and stuff that was spun into space, into place as our solar system formed. It was an odd reddish color and suggested extreme exposure to powerful cosmic rays. It was relatively bright, at least compared to the average coal black color of most known comets and asteroids. So it had a reddish color and it was bright. It was moving very, very fast and it was seen to accelerate as it moved away from the sun as comets do, but it did not have a comet's tail. It was also seen to flicker very quickly as though it was an elongated or flat object in a wild tumble. So Umama is certainly odd in its behavior. So. How do we come from that to aliens? To be or not to be, Professor Loeb joined forces with Shmuel Bailey, published a paper discussing, speculating that Umama was not a comet, not an asteroid, and instead its unusual trajectory explained if it was an artificial light sail. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence already checked and it had devote, devoted some of its precious radio telescope time to listen closely to this object, and there was not one single peep from it. No radio messages or beacons, no radar position finding emissions, nothing. But Professor Loeb is not discouraged. He says, I don't care what people say, I say what I think, and if the broad public takes an interest in what I say, that's a welcome result as far as I'm concerned. But in an indirect result since it's like politics, it's not based on popularity polls. But he seems keen to ramp up the speculation. He says, we have no way of knowing whether it's active technology or a spaceship that is no longer operative and is continuing to float in space. This is what Hartz quotes him as saying. Quote, but if Umama was created together with a whole population of similar objects that were launched randomly, the fact that we discovered it means that its creators launched a quadrillion uh, number of probes like it to every star in the Milky Way. Now, that's a major uh, imagination. Professor Loeb says he believes the universe, the universe to be littered with alien debris, and among them are living societies. And he states, finding them should be our top priority. Quote, our approach should be an archaeological one. In the same way we dig in the ground to find cultures that no longer exist, we must dig in space in order to discover civilizations that existed 
outside our planet. Now what about the scientific method? Prove, Professor Loeb discussed about Umama's origins. They were widespread within the scientific community. He says scientists of senior status said themselves that this object was peculiar, but were apprehensive about making their thoughts public. I don't understand that. After all, academic tenure is intended to give scientists the freedom to take risks without having to worry about their jobs, end quote. However, the extreme caution with which scientists watch their words as they seek such high status has a tendency to carry over. Quote, as children, we ask ourselves about the world. We allow ourselves to make errors. We learn about the world with innocence and honesty. As a scientist, you're supposed to enjoy the privilege of being able to continue your childhood, not to worry about the ego, but about uncovering the truth, especially after you get tenure, end quote. But critics point out that there's a difference between speculation and hypothesis built upon measurable quantities, proofs that is. He says, quote, while speculation is still spot on in my opinion, this is what Monash University astrophysicist Michael Brown says, quote, an artificial origin is not ruled out by the data, but given a natural explanation is consistent with the data, the natural explanation has to be preferred, end quote. So this does not deter Loeb. He says the search for extraterrestrial life is not speculation. It's a lot less speculative than the assumption that there is dark matter, invisible matter that constitutes 85% of the material in the universe, end quote. Professor Loeb is also an advocate of Russian billionaire Yuri Milner's breakthrough star shot proposal to build thousands of tiny star chips star chips, C-H-I-P-S, to propel towards our nearest neighbor, Alpha Centauri, in an effort to explore that solar system. Which may be why the concept sits so high in our mind, on his mind anyway. It's not as though he's entirely unaware of the risk, so. Quote, so it could be that I'm committed, committing image suicide if this turns out to be incorrect. On the other hand, if it turns out to be correct, it's one of the greatest discoveries in human history. Besides, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? I'll be relieved of my administrative duties. This will bring the benefit that I'll, I'll have more time for science." End quote. This interstellar object was originally discovered using Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii in the Haleakala Observatory it was discovered recently, as we said, October 19th, 2017. And it's, it, the Hawaiian term is for scout. And it was originally classified as a, an interstellar object, a hyperbolic asteroid, or a minor planet. I mean, they didn't even know what it was. And uh, it was first known, first, it's the first known object of its type. Umawa represents a unique case for the International Astronomic Union, a science designation for astronomical objects originally classified as comets. It was later reclassified as an asteroid due to the absence of a comma, a tail, and it was unambiguously identified as coming from outside the solar system. It's a new designation that was created for this. One, for interstellar object, I. Umama is the first object so identified and was designated 1i with the rules of the eligibility of objects for i numbers and the names to be assigned to those interstellar objects yet to be codified. And the name, as we said, in Hawaiian means u meaning reach out for moi, reduplicating for emphasis, meaning first in advance of. And it reflects the way this object is like a scout or a messenger. But there's more coming out on this, and I'll update you again with more videos concerning what other scientists believe that this object may be. Because there's still a lot of questions about this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. 
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.